All right, so let us start with the job description for the regional representative. And I'm going to share my screen so we can look at this together. Now, can you see all of that? That's not the one. Um, and Sherry, this is very weird. I don't see anything. That's new. it. That's it, Jane. Under the listing the uh, regions, then it says a regional representative will. You've got it on the screen. I can see it. Okay, good. Oh, here it is. I found it. Great. <laughs> um, Okay, so this is the, the list of states at the top here um, that go in each region. And like I said, if you if you notice any errors in here, please let me know and I'll try and correct it again. Um, so there are some things that are um, like, yeah, really your job description of what of what you do and and what you are. So everybody has already accomplished the first one. You live in the right place. So isn't that great? One down. The other, the next one is um, to communicate regularly with PEC members. And I think this is probably, you know, your main, your main purpose is to just, you know, you have a region of people who are connected by um, the same, the same issues the same uh, geographical location. And as their regional rep, um, your responsibility is to communicate with them. And this is something that, that PEC can help you with. And we will, we will go over that at the end of you know, what you need from PEC in order to accomplish your, your, your um, responsibilities. Um, another thing to do is to connect with uh, Presbyterian related organizations and other faith-based and secular environmental organizations in your region. And, and you know, another main point is to promote PEC um, as an organization, but also our events and our activities. And then um, be nice if you would recommend people, you know, that you meet, that you have conversations with, either email or, um, you know, over the phone who might be interested in serving on a PEC committee. And of course, you know, there's always fundraising. And um, we also, we have two campaigns a year, um, one in the fall, which is end of year fundraising. And then we have a membership drive um, in the spring that um, has a due date of Earth Day, April 22nd. That's when membership dues are due. And then you, you're all, since you're also on the steering committee, you have additional responsibilities. So you're expected to um, attend the monthly meetings that are um, done virtually. So that's, you know, kind of easy. And then what's a little more difficult is to go to the annual retreat. I'm sorry, it's at the annual steering committee retreat. Um, and we are gonna have an in-person steering committee retreat in association with the conference this year. So the conference is September 20th through 23rd. And um, I, I don't even know we've set dates, but it's probably the steering committee retreat would probably be the 24th and the 25th, something like that. Um, and that is going to be in Massanetta Springs, Virginia. And PEC will pay your way. We, you know, as a volunteer, we don't expect you to have to, you know, fork out the money um, as well as the time and energy to go to an in-person retreat. Okay, so I think that's all I have to cover on, on this. Are there any questions about, about your job description and what your responsibilities are as a regional rep? Okay, uh, then I think I just keep moving here. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that's great because what I want to talk about now is what types of tools that we have to help you. And um, that's why I have asked Dave Wasserman to be here. Um, Dave was regional rep for the Southwest region, which has a different name now and is combined with others. Um, uh, in 2019 and 2020, and I was just very impressed by how um, seriously he took his job or his his responsibilities and how well he communicated with people in his region. So Dave, I would like you to um, share what you did. Uh, first of all, I need to find out a little bit. Sharma, how long have you been a part of PEC? Is this new for you? about a year about one year so yes it is new and i'm not clergy okay sam how about you how long have you been part of pec um well i've been a member for a little while i i i've been involved off and on for about 20 years i mean when it was presbyterians for restoring creation i was a restoring creation enabler for the presbyterian north central iowa hmm. but in, in and out in and out yeah. So Bill, first first time, first, first time on the board here, though. And Bill, nice to see you. You may not remember me from executive days and and um, J meetings, but how, how long have you been a part of PEC? Um, well, I guess technically since uh, 1995, because it, uh, it was kind of birthed when we convened a, a gathering in Louisville and uh, mm -hmm. we evaluate where we were halfway through the turnaround decade, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I was very new uh, to PEC when I was asked to come sit on um, as a regional representative. It turned out to be a short-lived experience for me because I, um, my wife uh, uh, was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer and, and so, I ended up having to resign as her the illness further progressed, and um, so I wasn't I wasn't with PEC all that that long, um, and I had really no, um, not a lot of knowledge. I mean, I'd heard about you know restoring creation congregations and 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 some of the activities, um, but but even. Even there, my particular ministry towards the end of my career was um, executive service focused on institutional stuff and uh, not so much missional. So I was looking forward to a chance to, uh, you know, get involved with with PEC. That became for me in my retirement um, a passion. Um, the the thing I didn't know um, is um, that. Um, there's all these institutional requirements to keep an organization going. Jane's mentioned some of them, you know, help with fundraising, that sort of thing. Um, and um, and then there is this thing called a region of people. Um, people individually sign up. And um, my initial interest was to try to get to know them a little bit better. Um, who's out there? And um, and so I, I took a little bit of energy, thanks to Jane, it happened. But um, initially, folks weren't willing to share the the uh, email addresses of the of the members of your region, and um, so I I just pressed a bit, and J Jane um, um, and Jane sort of advocated, you know, we, we got to do this. So they eventually gave me a list of folks, and that freed me up to then start writing to them and um you know i think um that may have been a, a a good practice to do i tried to write to them oh maybe every two months sometimes three months and um tried to do a mix of um sharing um some of what i was reading out in the environmental world climate change world um earth care um, matters, resources like the Yale Climate Connection, things that had come across, and I'd highlight an article and say, you know, you might want to check this out. This seems to apply to climate change issues for the region where where we live in the Southwest. Um, 
And then couple that with reinforcing what's the PEC's uh, national sort of communications, you know, the upcoming events and activities and things like that. Um, uh, Jane has a copy or two of, um, of some of the emails that I sent out and you're welcome to, you know, pass those on Jane as, as a okay. sample. As mm -hmm. a sample. Um, so that became one communication. The, the second piece was that as someone um, was identified as having just joined PEC, was in the region, I <clears throat> sent a little note saying welcome. Um, and sometimes would add the latest little newsletter or my email attachments. And so that became another way of trying to build some connecting. And um, occasionally I'd hear from somebody um, and some of the long timers were very interested in trying to recreate um, um, what used to be the way the church worked, which is, well, let's get together in person. Let's have a conference. Let's have a, a gathering that way. And so there was even talk, um, uh, maybe the Southwest could go to Ghost Ranch and host uh, the national PEC gathering. And um, there just wasn't a lot of energy to try to pull that all together. Um, distances are big all across this country. And and so it's hard to do that. We um, so I let go of that, um, and then got drawn into doing the institutional stuff as a as a regional rep, um, and trying to figure out a balance between the two. I think I remember. And Jane, I uh, it's been I've slept since then. I think I even sent out a survey to um, uh, the the people in the region, just asking some general questions uh, and then uh, sort of tabulated that, got a pretty good response. Um, I, I'm imaging at least three, maybe, you know, 60% of the folks who got the survey answered. And so uh, we, um, and, and again, you have those results, Jane. I looked in my old files and they're all gone. I don't have any of them. Yeah, I looked. I looked at for your emails, but I couldn't find it. I didn't look in my files, though. That's a good. That's a good um, place to look. So, um, um, I, um, all I did was work to, to try to build um, connections and bridges. It was during that time that there wasn't a national conference, so even that event did not provide me an opportunity to become mm -hmm. a person yeah. member. But I just did a lot of writing, I suppose. And, and I was involved with other things outside PEC during that time. Um, <clears throat> since then, I have um, focused more on being um, um, uh, with a work group. There's 10 of us in Santa Fe Presbytery. We meet monthly. We've met all during COVID. And we've had a variety of um, uh, approaches, success, um, in this world, this coming Saturday, the Presbytery is going to have a meeting, and its theme will be climate change. There, and um, we've put together the program, our team, and put together a forty-page resource of um, climate change um, groups, connecting points, and programs, and everything from some film festivals to children's books that are, have been recommended. And um, you are welcome to have a copy of that. Uh, Jane already has it, as a matter of fact, but I've asked her to wait until we at least get to introduce it to the Presbytery here, um, and then then we'd love to have it shared, however anybody might find some use for it. It, <clears throat> it may just be one more effort to try to paint a bigger picture of what all this climate change opportunity is for us to um, live better and more faithfully. So, let me stop and just sort of see what. Okay. Well, and I, I want to welcome Mindy um, and Dave. I don't believe you know Mindy. She's our, our new coordinator. I shouldn't call her new anymore. She's been here. <laughs> um, but um, yes, we're very pleased to have her. And yeah, I got on okay and didn't mess up too badly yet, I don't think. Looks great. <laughs> uh, I, already have, Dave. I already have three questions. All right, go Charmel. Charmel. <laughs> Okay, 
So you mentioned the uh, challenge of getting the emails for the, was it the individuals or the congregations in your region? Well, um, it turned out to be a mix of both. Um, uh, there were some email addresses, fewer numbers of, of a congregational address that would be going, say, to an administrative assistant or a pastor. Mm -hmm. The majority of them, uh, they were translated into personal emails. And there might be three, four, five of those personal emails that were connected to one earth care congregation. Um, and I, did, I just wrote to everybody. So are we still going to have that challenge or will we be able to easily get the email addresses for the people in our regions? Well, I'm going to let Mindy answer that. Um, <laughs> mind, Mindy? <laughs> yeah, thanks to our um, MailChimp database. Um, we have... Uh, well, there's members, which are people who've donated in the past three years or even going further back, I guess. We have most of them an email address for them. A few people send in checks that don't really do email, but most of them have an email address for. And then we have additional contacts also in your regions, which I guess if we wanted to, you know, at some point include all of our contacts in this, we have quite a few email addresses. So if we go that route... I think we'll pretty much be okay. Yeah, but I think um, just in terms of numbers, we need to keep mm -hmm. it to our donors. Yes, yes, I understand and that. And actually, one of the things I wanted to do, oh, go ahead, Sharma, you have more questions. Well, okay, uh, just two more. Uh, I do have a question about whether Louisiana is in middle America or South Atlantic because on the list, it's listed with South Atlantic, but on the map, yeah. it's listed uh, with Middle America. So it doesn't matter to me. I just wonder if, okay. if I have Louisiana I'm, or I'm, not. Yeah, I'm going to um, show you the map in, in just okay. a, a few seconds here, and that should answer that question. Okay. And my last uh, question is, I like the idea about the survey that Dave mentioned. I like that a lot. And I'm wondering if, maybe this is not the time for this, but if at some point we could have a survey that is generic, but each of us sends it out to people in our own region. So then we collect the feedback from our region for that survey and take a look at it. That's, that's a great a, idea. I those like are it. all my questions. That's it. Thank you. Don't hesitate to ask questions. <laughs> um, okay, so a new challenge for Jane. I'm gonna try and share my screen again. And um, okay, so what, I, what I've done now is I've taken you to the website I don't understand this um, because it's not showing me what you're looking at. Are you seeing the, are you seeing the map? I yeah, mean, are you seeing the, the website? Mountain he did. And it just went away? Yes. Oh, well, then you're looking at the same thing I am. Okay, there we go. Uh, so what I want to do is that I just want to walk you through this so that you can you can see where the map is in case you're not familiar with the website. Um, so if you go, this is the homepage, presbyearthcare.org. And if you go over to the right here to leadership and then scroll down to regional representatives and click on that. And then scroll down again, you should see this freshly printed map <laughs> that I think Mindy put up today. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the latest map with the new names. Oh, you don't even know about the new names. Um, yeah, so maybe I should tell you about the new names too. Anyway, it's color coded. Um, and as you can see, the green area here in this in the Northwest Pacific mountain region is now called, when you go down here to the key, is now called Western because I was getting some flack about the name. So we simplified that. And then the other one that we did was central. This, you know, I don't know <laughs> if this is really central or not, but we agreed on a, a central, um, I'm sorry, north central is now the, the name for the central region. So those were the only two names that we changed. But that, Sharmel, to answer your question, you can see that 
these four states, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama, um, are like hash, hash marks. I don't know what they are, stripes of, of North Central and South Atlantic. And the reason is, is because this map was determined by synods and synods don't necessarily follow state lines. And so Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama have, I guess they're, they're just in two synods each probably. And so that's why, um, you know, those four states will be listed in two different regions. So the movie is gonna be able to look at what synod these people live in and then assign yeah. them to a regional rep because Mindy is just amazing. Um, I hope she's still on to hear that. I'm on, <laughs> I'm not that fast at it, but I'll get it done. <laughs> okay, Shoma, does it answer your question? Okay, are there, are there any other questions about- If you uh, scroll if you scroll down, Jane, I um, updated the names for people's regions there and they can see what their, their synods are also. Yeah, and I guess just for people like me who started and didn't really, I was not raised a Presbyterian, so I didn't know a whole lot about the structure of the church. So <laughs> churches are arranged in presbyteries, right? So, and, and all of you probably know what presbytery you, you're in. And then the presbyteries are arranged in synods. And then the, the, um, the Presbyterian church, the general assembly reports to the, or communicates through the synods who communicate through the presbyteries who communicate to the churches. At least that's the plan, right? Okay, so, now I have a new question. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, I was going to jump in because you asked about Louisiana. It looks like Louisiana then is in your region. Yes, it is. Right. I see that now. Okay, I have a question though. Uh, scroll on back down to where you list the regions and you list the reps. Could one of those, I guess our names probably, could those be hot links to our email addresses? So if somebody's there and they say, oh, yeah. Uh, Mark is mine. Let me click on Mark so I can send him an email right now while something's on my mind. Could that happen? Yeah, it used to be that way. We used to have it, emails. Maybe still, it's just not not showing up right now. Well, on, your, been so, on this page, so yeah, I can tell you that um, it is supposed to do that. But what's what we're doing is everybody will have a separate um, email address. Mm -hmm. That will be on there so that people can email you directly, even without the hot link. And the, and we've had those before, but the thing is, we've changed the names of the regions. So I actually need to change some of the email addresses. Like um, something was, I'm not even be able to think of the example, but we didn't have Middle America. It was called something else. So the email address, let's just say it was Southwest. The email address would be something like PEC Southwest at gmail.com. And we had that underneath your name so that people could either click on the hot link for PEC Southwest at gmail.com or, you know, keep track of that email address and email you later. And what that would do is it would go to that email address, which would, um, I, I was make, I would make so that it also forwarded to your personal email. And that way your personal email address is not on our website. I don't know if that makes sense, but it was like mm -hmm. an official, it's an official PEC email address, but it forwards to your personal email address. So then if you needed to email people and I will give you the log on for your PEC email address, you can actually log on and email people as your PEC email address. We're just trying to keep it so that you're not giving out your personal email address to the whole wide world because mm -hmm. one day you may not be on the steering committee anymore and somebody else can be linked to the PEC email address for your region. Did I say that right, Jane? Yes, I think you did. But I also want to say that the Organizational Development Committee is the is the group that changed the names and we just met last week. So it's not yeah. like Wendy's been falling behind on her job. <laughs> She's running as fast as she can. But I am going to be contacting. I will send you an email once I get you set up with your PEC email address. I will be emailing you because what you'll have to do is accept the invitation to that email address. And I've already done 
the executive committee. So I went through this with Jane and Joe and Bruce already. And so once we get the uh, regional email addresses straightened out here with the new names, you'll I will let you know that um, I'm sending you an invitation that you'll need to accept and then you have your PEC email address. It will all become clear. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Any more questions? All right, um, trying to think what we're gonna do next here. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then we will go to, um, uh, yeah, tools for regional reps. So, uh, so Sharm Sharmal, you had asked about the list of names and I, that was answered for you. I do think there may have been a problem with earth care congregations. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, PCUSA, or I should say Presbyterian Hunger Program is not very open with those. They're very, they're very protective of those contacts. So we do have a list of the churches, but not any, any people to contact at the church. And um, I mean, all that information is on the web if you wanna look each one up individually. And I, I've started doing that for the conference, but um, I don't know how long I'm, I'm gonna be able to do that. How up to date is your list of congregations? Earth care congregations? Right. Well, it's almost a year old. I think it was released in March of 2022. Okay. Um, and actually, well, in February 15th in two days is the application deadline for, um, I don't know, I would say last year, what you did last year, 2022. And, um, and then it takes, it takes a while for those to be um, reported out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the list I have is almost a year old. But there are a lot. 276 or something like that. There are a lot of earth care congregations now, 267. Okay. Um, Jane, Jane I'd, I'd like to make a comment because what I'm hearing in this uh, is a continued protection of information yeah. that is going to um, stifle PEC's ability to grow and, and broaden itself. And it's not just the hunger program. Um, if you, um, I, I, this is my experience and, and uh, maybe I was wrong to do it, but I used my personal email address. And then when I had to leave the organization, I wrote a last email and said, folks, I'm no longer gonna be the connector for you. Um, and I never heard well, there were a couple of, of immediate emails saying, hey, thanks for what you did, but then that disappeared. It really wasn't. It any, wasn't an issue. It wasn't okay. an issue to be fearful uh, about spillover. At mm -hmm. the same time, I to stay into the world of, well, the only people that we can really share are the ones who give money to the organization. Mm -hmm. I think you get any kind of contact from anybody. Right. It becomes an opportunity then to invite them to you know, become a, a financial supporter and be added to the list. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know where in your discussions you might want to revisit, you know, and put a little pressure on the hunger program. You know, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is the issue is the issue for the hunger program, the financial competition, if we give out these names, well, then PEC might try to get money, you know, directly mm -hmm. to them. And, you know, is, is there something mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. That's, you know, out of that institutional fear of survival. Yeah. Um, but I think you got to push, I, I I would push back. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, you know, we do have a pretty good relationship with um, with Rebecca, for sure, and Jessica. So I, yeah, we need, do need to revisit that. But as far as the um, the emails that I was talking, or the, the members I was talking about, um, each of these regions has approximately a hundred members already. And <laughs> that's why I'm saying, let's just limit it to those people who give money for the regional reps to contact. The other people get contacted from Mindy, 
It's not like they're left out of the communication. They're definitely getting, they're getting emails. Well, um, that, that's fine. I, it just seems to me if you want to ask your regional representatives to have direct contact with the people in the region, it ought to be all of them, not just the fund <laughs> funding supporters, even though two times of the year, you have to decide who you're going to write to for funding, just the ones who've given in the past, or open that all up to say, would yeah. you like to give? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But think it's We through. can have a separate discussion about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what? I said we could have a separate discussion about it. I, I, I need to be aware of my time, uh, and I have sure. five five ideas I'd like to share before I leave. Okay. Would it be all right if I kind of go there next? That'd be um, under tools? Resources, ideas. Sure, and we can okay. finish this up after you leave if 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 we're not done. Oh. Yeah. So I I did ask um, Dave to hold off because I wanted you all to come up with um, with ideas of how you can contact people in your region um, in your regions. And Dave has a lot of ideas he'd like to share too. So I'll let Dave go first. Well, uh, <clears throat> real quickly. Uh, one, one of the things um, you can do is to build off of what other people are doing. And so I mentioned this earth care resource packet that the Presbytery of Santa Fe is gonna be receiving. It'll be on links and you know, to wander through that. And to, if you do decide to, to write some sort of your own email to your folks in your region, to pull, pull various pieces of that earth care resource and to highlight one of those and say, you might take a look at this this website or this group or whatever, and just pick it up that way. That's that's one thing. One of the things we did in the Presbytery's Earth Care team was we hosted several Zoom uh, film festivals and live presenters. And we would get somewhere around 25 folks that would come on for an hour and we watch two or three environmental films talk a little bit about them. And um, on other occasions, we had themes uh, for speakers, um, everything from what's the Native American perspective these days um, uh, to earth care, uh, uh, to what individuals can do um, you know, in their home um, to be more supportive and, and, and attentive to earth care issues. So um, offering a little program that's a sub um, for a region, for example, you might get some response and that might indicate um, uh, more opportunities for others. To push that one a little further, a third idea is um, you could you could invite four or five people inside your region to join you in re reviewing a film that you pick and have them talk about it, record mm -hmm. it, and then make that something available to everyone in the region. And you get different people to take turns being part of a little program. Um, use the people inside the region who have their strengths. Um, won't have to wait for the national speaker all the time. Uh, and, um, you know, you don't need to have a lot of folks, but, you know, watch a movie together. We, we use the film festival and the um, program presenters inside the presbyteries um, building of relationships. And you can go to the the, the, the largest environmental film festival in the world is the DC EFF environmental film festival.org dceff.org and it is it's got hundreds and hundreds of films and they're all in that sort of six minute to ten minute kind of range Ooh. that long different themes and it's well organized um, you um, so so that's another idea um, the last two sort of commonsensical is um, whatever you, if, if you decide to use a communication tool that you put together for your region, don't just tell them things, ask, what's going on in your church? What's, what, what's the latest book you've read? You know, get some people to respond by sharing what they're learning and, and, and what they're seeing. And, um, and then the last idea is <clears throat> everybody's got their own sense of a vision for what's the big picture? How do we talk about climate change these days? And um, 
So the one that works for me is to think of a two by two grid. And across the top, you, would, you could put the words mitigation, uh, that is reversing global warming or adaptation, which is finding the ways that we help people um, live through what we can't mitigate. And then down the side is the way it's worked out is uh, education and action. Um, these are typical traditional sorts of ways of thinking. So you have four boxes. One is mitigation for it and education. One's mitigation and action. And then you have another for adaptation and education and adaptation and action. And to me, um, at least keeping that Whatever the vision is, I think you all ought to sit down together and talk about what's your vision, but what, how do we simplify um, an ongoing approach to um, uh, gathering people uh, to work inside the life of the church, but to also be connected to these the larger, more secular efforts. There's such incredible things going on. Um, it, 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 it amazes me that the New Yorker came out just in November, climate change from A to Z. Someone took each letter of the alphabet and then reflected on what's going on. Um, it's a great article. Um, and it's it's become for me one of the go-to um, resources right now when I talk with folks. So those are my thoughts and I'd be glad to answer a quick question before um, and I can give you an email address if you, if it's okay, Jane, can they have my email address? It's up to you. You might get inundated with no, all no, no, scam. No. Okay. Dave, Dave Wass, 1948. So it's D-A-V-E-W-A-S-S? -S. Right, 1948, and that's a Gmail. Okay. Okay. So any, any response to any of that that I've just sort of kind of laid out very quickly? Oh, good. That's good. I love the dceff.org as a resource. That's excellent. I, well, I can see organizing some things around those little short films. Well, you, if um, take a look at the resource, Jane. I'm sure you you will send the the this Earth Care resources that we put together, and um, yeah, yourself to use any of it. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Thank Dave. You all. You take you care. Time. Nice to see you. See you too. Bye bye. Okay. Um, so we just have uh, 10 minutes left. I'd like to just keep this meeting to an hour, even though we started about 10 minutes late. Um, yeah. So Dave has a lot of energy. Um, I would say that's why I, I picked him out because he just he he's um, jumps tall buildings in one bound or something over that goes. Um, so I'm not expecting you all to do all that. I'm trying to simplify so that it's actually manageable. Um, so let's talk about what, um, what I think you could do and what you think and what you think you can do and how we can help. So maybe let me, let me not even tell you what I think we, you should do, but you tell me what you think you can do and what you need from PEC to help you do that. Well, I think I can um, make three or four communications a year uh, to folks within my region, but I would need not only email addresses, but instead of bare email addresses, I'd like to know what where the person's from, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what town, what state, yeah. um, just, you know, that the more information I could have, mm -hmm. I think the more helpful it would be for me in making these communications. So that's one thing. Okay, and Mindy, yeah. you can you can pull that up, right? Yep, I can give you everything. I can give you everything we have. Some people I do have their, most people I have their church. Um, some people I have their presbytery and their synod, but obviously those can be looked up. So okay. most mm -hmm. people I do have their church and their city and their state and their mailing address. So that's pretty much what I could give you. When people actually, when people register for the workshops, we have in the registration, some additional questions that we haven't really made use of the answers to yet. We've asked people what their role is in their church or organization. We've asked them, are they a member of a um, earth care congregation? We just have never used that information, but that would be a good thing to cross-reference, yeah, I sure think, would. because anything mm -hmm. like that could be helpful. 
-hmm. Yes. I okay. Agree, especially that. And that was one of the things that came up um, yeah. at the previous meeting was to list earth care congregations, what churches are part of earth care, which churches are yeah. earth care congregations. This would be like the reverse way of looking at mm -hmm. it, looking at the right. people who are members and seeing whether or not they are an earth care congregation, mm -hmm. but still mm -hmm. it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Mindy, if somebody is a donor, are they automatically considered a member? Yeah, we that's how it's been done. Um, I know we have like membership categories and um, but it's a little tricky because we kind of feel like if people donate what they can, that should count. Um, so yeah, but some people have became lifetime members years ago before we even had the database and they'll jump in and remind you that, you know, they're a lifetime member. So, you know, a few slip through the cracks, but. Sam, I think you're one of those. You and your <laughs> are lifetime members. You might members. reminded us, yeah. Right. Yeah. If it was before our donor database, um, sometimes we have to be reminded, but in general, yeah, if, if somebody's donated, we count them. And everybody who attended a conference is in the database, right? Yes, yeah. we do add mm -hmm. them because they have given money. Yeah. <laughs> to go to the conference. <laughs> so here's what I, I think I can do to start off once I get uh, what I need from Mindy in terms of what my email address is and the yeah. email addresses that are in my uh, area, I can send out an introductory email and Ooh. maybe ask a question. I like that suggestion from Dave. And since Dave is in my region, I'm just going to go to Dave's resources and see what he's doing and ask him if I can just borrow that for my first introductory letter. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, um, I actually have some thoughts here on um, emails that you can send out quarterly. And so the first one would be um, just what you said, Mindy, uh, not Mindy, Sharmal, is to introduce yourself as the new regional rep for your region. And then also um, the one thing I thought of is to send out a link to the Lenten devotional. I mean, that starts next week. Yeah, so if you could get those emails out within the next week, um, that would be very timely. Even if you are later, it'll still work. You wanted to um, give them every time a little something of the most current thing, because if you right. sent them something around the time of our uh, membership drive in April, then you could give them the link to that, like whatever is current. And if you need mm -hmm. help accessing what's going on immediately, we, you know, I can help you with that too or whatever webinars we have coming up or whatever. Just yes. they, it helps people yeah. feel like they're connected with mm -hmm. what's current. So um, I know in the past that people have, have appreciated when I draft an email for them. Is that Would that be helpful to any of you or do you think you, yeah? Oh, okay. Sure. Good, good to know. Sure so we'll do that. Um, just draft it for you and you know, give it to you um, before, before it's too late. <laughs> Before it's too late, good. All right. Before it's too late. <laughs> yeah, like after lunch. <laughs> okay. I think I have a combination of all that. Um, to reach out to the people we know or who we have contact info, uh, just to let them know what what's going on they can, and offer any help they can get. The other thing which I've started to do is to look at every, since um, basically to look at the websites of the synods and presbyteries to begin with, mm -hmm. um, just to see if there's anything programmatic that they're doing. Which, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and start, start that way. Um, and also just to see if I know anybody that's still on staff there. And, um, yeah. Start, uh, start looking at that. Um, and if there's a way to add, if there's, you know, if they have anything like a, a committee or a program that then we can start maintaining contact with them. Um, well, and, and you know, one of Bruce's big ideas is to have a, a Presbytery rep for every, I mean, a represent PEC rep for every Presbytery. 
Right. And, I mean, that was the theory behind uh, in restoring creation enablers and various mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Enablers. And that, I think, that because we invited everybody to come to different national events and bring young people in particular, and so some are, were better than others of having two or three people join them. And um, it, it, it's, um, it was always a, a hard thing because the bureaucracy in Louisville, um, at one point, they did not want multiple email lists. So we were not supposed to have programmatic emails lists for our different offices. That was all to be centralized. And then they even said that um, Presbyterians were complaining about getting bombarded with stuff. Mm. So no one was allowed to send stuff to Presbyterians except through a certain program that was mm. black what, what could go, what couldn't. And it became just ridiculous. But uh, yeah. um, that's some of the, I think, what's behind not sharing all the contact info for, for the- Oh, the, I see, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. But at any rate, the other thing I think is the demise of um, the old Eco-Justice Working Group of the National Council, where we used to collaborate across denominations for our co big conferences. And so, um, that was always a way of getting, you know, cross fertilization, pollination, whatever you want to call it. And people got a sense of they were part of something bigger than struggling along um, locally. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even, you know, there's, you know, you know, like you, Charmel knows the interfaith power and light, they've got their own networks and uh, Green Faith has theirs. and um creation justice ministries which is kind of the new and you know, even even within ipl the, there's always this tension between states sending out emails and national sending out emails and states yeah. don't want national sending out emails to their state people because they talk about stuff that maybe doesn't you know that um offends some people in their area so it just gets touchy i guess yeah yeah but I think that part of what I'm trying to do is figure out how, is there any official channel, so to speak, through the Presbyteries and then all of getting PEC's name and programs out there so that people see that we're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. and, if, um, and, and I have worked with someone at the national level, Bill, um, who sends out news uh, newsletters to the to the presbyteries, sends out information to the presbyteries to include in their newsletters, and and I you know I can look up her name I do not remember it, um, so I mean that we did have we do have that contact whether presbyteries decide to promote it or not is up to them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I think we got an opportunity you now. You know, the presbyterians today is going on a uh, hibernation or something well, I forget what they call it um our congregation we've started trying to put out uh, access to devotionals for Lent and Advent and um I think there's one that's available for like 15 bucks a copy which is ridiculous wow. um but you know Up Unbound is doing one that's not out yet they've announced it's coming out of indigenous voices that are going to be um i'm looking forward to but if they don't get out here pretty soon that they're going to miss the boat of getting it out into the congregations there's for sure yeah um, so thank you. Thank, thank so you. We have, i think we have a chance to promote ours you know yeah, yeah. yep yeah. mindy's working on it yeah. also we're kind of helping to promote paul galbraith is that how you say his last name? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're helping to promote his as well, which his is daily. Ours is just weekly plus bonus um, days. <laughs> mm -hmm. But his is a daily one that he published. We're also kind of helping to promote his a little bit. Well, the last one that they 
uh, Presbyterians today did was a daily with devotional for uh, which was based on um, the Celtic traditions and uh, mm. it was excellent. I mean, it was very thick. I mean, mm. very well done. Um, and it could be repeated all the time. I mean, it's you don't have to toss it aside. And, mm -hmm. um, it's true. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, well, anything else that you all need from us? And I, I'm just thinking of a few things in particular, like do you know how to send out mass emails? And um, can you get into Dropbox? And <laughs> if you need any technical assistance like that, um, Mindy or I can help you probably, mostly Mindy. Um, but, and, and I'll just, I'll just give you um, some tidbits that I know about sending out group emails is that um, try not to send out to more than 10 at a time because that flags it as spam or, you know, something or other. You really? Especially with Gmail. If you're sending to Gmail addresses, they're, they're pretty protective. If we have a constant contact account, can we use that? And maybe we could import those email addresses. It wouldn't be going out like from Arkansas Center Faith Power and Light, but it'd be going out through the middle America region of PEC mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Could we do that? And that way you can send it. I mean, I have like 1600 people on that, in that account for Arkansas Center Faith Power and Light. It goes to all of them at one time. Is that possible? It, so through your constant contact account, is that what you're saying you want to import So that I wouldn't have to buy another constant contact account. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could. We have MailChimp and it doesn't let us do a whole bunch of sub lists, but I've worked with constant contact in a previous position and I know what you mean. It lets you have all these different subgroups. And I mean, if it's coming from your email address, I guess there's nothing wrong with how you want to organize sending out your messages and... You know, if you have that, sure. I it's think so content. that if they responded, it'd go back to Arkansas IPL at gmail.com. I think well, that's the way it would work, though. So that probably yeah. would work. Yeah, it probably would. Is but it also, would be too sorry. confusing. Is right. constant contact still free? Yeah. No. Well, you know, you have to pay if you have, yeah. But we're paying for MailChimp. We have a paid version because yeah. our contacts went over a certain number. Yeah. So we're not even on free MailChimp anymore. Well, let's choose, use MailChimp then and yeah. see if you can yeah. set up categories. Well, it doesn't let you. It lets you have three. <laughs> um, but it does let you, it does let you um, tag them. So what we could do is go through our list and tag them by their region. And I guess that's something I can look into. Um, and then you could log on to our mail chimp let me think here well let's work on that yeah what if could could um Charmel make her own mail chimp do her own her if the if it's yeah. free can she have her private mail chimp or her yeah she can or or her regional I could mail chimp? I, I could but since I'm already paying for constant contact through Arkansas IPL I don't want to have to pay for another one and I'd have to keep my numbers down I Ooh. think Right, right. I don't mind. I don't mind trying that at all. Yeah, yeah. Just set up another account that's free because you only have a hundred people you're mailing to, right? Or yeah, now. and it's or probably now. the limit's probably a thousand before you have to pay. At least that's what it is for. Yeah, people. and as long as you identify it as yourself and not that you are Presbyterians for Earth Care, so that people get confused, or, you know, um, I think that would be fine. Then you, I can send you your your region as a CSV file, and you can just import it into your Mailchimp. Holly, you're so helpful. That's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. By the way, by the way, this is do do we are uh, this is may some seem like a silly question, but do we have a budget for uh, regional reps? I mean, um, and the reason that comes to mind is, you know, we locally uh, our Earth Care congregations yeah. have brought an environmental scientist to talk to us uh, via Zoom and about advocacy issues. And, you know, we gave her an honorarium uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, do we have any room for that? Or do I need to do some fundraising too for that? 
So you want to do it just for your region. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if we did something for the region, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that involves some costs. I think we need to talk about that at our steering and committee. So we do not, at this point, we do not have a budget for regional. Yeah. Okay. But you know what? That's fine. If you, if you had an uh, environmental scientist that was real, willing to give a presentation, why wouldn't we just do that as a PEC webinar yeah. so that yeah. your region's people could uh, watch it and so could all the others? Mm -hmm. And it that could be hosted by about. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. You know, our speaker was focused, especially on the Black Belt of Alabama. So, you yeah. know, it was very peculiar to our region. But uh, oh, yeah. 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 That's but, a good point. But, but I think you both have good points, because I think those regional speakers are really important for um, in, um, motivating people. Has anyone I... had good luck with um, within our regions, there are probably seminaries, colleges and universities. Yeah, um, yeah. I've been working on that for the for the conference. Uh-huh. Yeah, making lists. Yeah, I was real excited to see a Columbia sponsoring um yeah. something coming up pretty soon. But I but I got the news on that kind of late. Um I didn't I wasn't aware that was coming up, but uh but yeah, so Columbia's in our region and they're doing oh. some interesting things. And yeah. Well, yeah. well PEC sponsoring that conference and Bruce is speaking at it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Mindy and I are supposed to be going because we have a, a table. Mm -hmm. so. Anything else? You all have been wonderful. Um, very, uh, what I want to say, engaged. That's the word. <laughs> been very engaged. Um, Jane, just a quick question. Um, sure. Earth Day is not that far away, um, right? Historically, would it, has there been any kind of programmatic stuff that happened around that? Um, um, I mean, I know we used to put out uh, different groups have put out at different times, like sample worship services, um, sermon ideas around scripture texts, and stuff like that. Um, well, I, you know, I, I can't think of really anything. I mean, I know Mindy um, started some resources for the web page, but it really could be added to. Um, I used to make sure that there was a an email newsletter that went out about Earth Day um, and put it on Facebook. But other than that, we may have had a summit of webinar once in a while about Earth Day. Right. I just did a program for my presbytery about preparing for Earth Day for churches, kind of you know suggestions and activities they could do for Earth Day. So, well, the season of creation thing, which migrated it to September, mm -hmm. seems to have been uh, catching on, at least in different parts of the world yeah. and all. Yeah, um, and. In the, that happens to be the month that we're going to have our national conference, right? So, um, oh, I didn't even think of that. Um, we might want to think about how to oh, link. Yeah. Like, oh, that's that's a great, it's a great connection there, Bill. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking this communication timeline that you sketched out. I was looking at it and thinking of the spring, the Earth Day resources. That'd also be, uh, I think, a really good time to put, promote, uh, announce, and promote the fall conference, so mm -hmm. people get it, get it on their calendars. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely, yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't have it in there, did I? Yeah, no, that's a good yeah. idea to yeah. have the conference. All right. Well, I'm I'm so glad that people didn't have meetings scheduled at four that you could run over a little mm -hmm. bit. Appreciate all of you being here. Um, I just like to close this with a little prayer for um, um, Rick uh, person who is in the hospital with sepsis. And that, that can be very serious, so. Yeah, what's that now? Bruce is in uh, the hospital? Yeah, Rick is in the hospital, yeah. Rick. Rick person, he is Oh yeah, the, right, yeah, uh, right. North yeah. Central Regional Rep. Yeah. Yeah. Sepsis is not anything to mess around with. Yeah. Mm -mm. 
Um, Dear God, we call on you again um, to please be with Rick as he um, battles with sepsis in the hospital. We ask that you give him strength and love and let him feel your protection, Lord, that you are with him and will always be. I ask that you be with us as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Appreciate you. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you all. See yeah. some of you tomorrow, I guess. Or are we all? I know. Uh, three days yeah, we'll be tomorrow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Okay. No, we all have different hats to take on and off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.